Hi, I'm Russ Briault with the Shroud of Tune Education Project, and welcome to the Shroud Report. My guest today is uh, Ian Wilson, historian, author, and um, you know, Ian, thank you for joining us here. It's a pleasure. And you, probably more than anyone, have advanced the knowledge of the Shroud uh, with your landmark book in 1978, The Shroud of Turin, and and uh, 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 famous places, secret faces, or uh, and uh, then there was the. Your your last one, which published last year, the uh, the blood on the and the shroud, and um, um, so in, in uh, I, I would say, I mean, I simply represent a lot of people who've been putting a lot of research into the, the shroud. I've tried to sort of synthesize all the different findings, but that's you know, it's very much more than the <laughs> and 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 that's why I'm delighted that you're that you're here because on the shroud report, we've we've had a lot of folks on that have a particular areas of specialty, but 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 because you've looked at the global view, the the whole topic, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know what? Um, but let me just before we go down that road, what what got you interested in the shroud in the first place? It goes back a lot, very long way. I was a schoolboy, um, fourteen, fifteen. Um, I was completely agnostic. I was also, because I was a complete dunce at, at music, I was also very interested in art. And I thought I could actually look at any painting or section of painting and tell you the name of the artist, the century it's painted, or, or whatever. And in a magazine article, I came across this picture of, of the shroud face. And, uh, and it said this had been around in Europe since at least the Middle Ages. And I looked at that and Guess what? This is not any painting. This is not. This, this is a photograph, mm -hmm. and for it to come out of the Middle Ages, it, it shouldn't. It can't exist. And uh, it was the first thing that kind of rocked my agnosticism. And it took ten years before I really began to take it seriously. But when I did begin to take it seriously, and I began to ask questions of it, so I. I became hooked, and I would never have believed that it would be all these years later that uh, I'm still interested in, and still mystified by the subject. I think, you know, for all that we think we found out in the last um, few decades, there's a, such a lot more that we still do not know. You know, your particular area uh, as, a, as a historian, um, in, in your book in 1978, The Shot of Turin, you uh, laid out this this. Um, new idea that that the shroud may be linked to another cloth that was uh, in Constantinople and Edessa, and, and which you were able to establish a, a very solid historical trail. You know, even going all the way back to first century. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to ask you to re go through that again here, but but obviously one of the biggest problems I would suppose with um, with with shroud researchers today is that we're we're uh, up against a radiocarbon date that was done in 1988 mm -hmm. saying that the shroud is not first century yeah. but that it has a date range of 1290 to 13, 1360. Um, as a historian and believing that the shroud does have that historical trail back to the first century how do you reconcile that? Right. Well as far as my theory was concerned. I mean, there definitely was a historical object, um, which was a cloth with an impression of Jesus' face on it, which you can trace as a historical object um, between certainly the 6th century and 1204. And the whole thing rests on whether or not that was one and the same as um, our Turin Shroud. I still believe that that is one and the same. And in fact, what is most interesting is that in the years since the carbon dating, it has in a sense been carbon dating that has wobbled. Because people have sort of kind of fallen into this false notion that because it's all nice and clean and scientific, that it must be unquestionably correct. And the fact is that if you talk to archaeologists, they will often tell you that um, anomalies do occur in carbon dating. And I began to come across these mm -hmm. cases of uh, datings of mummy linens where um, they would date the body of the mummy and they would date the linen wrappings and the linen wrappings would turn out to be 1,000 years younger mm. than the, um, the body. And it was consistently that the linen was always younger than the body. 
And so the question is, was there something about linen that uh, is, is peculiar, that might be responsible? We still really do not have clearly the answers, but one researcher who, in fact, does seem to have pointed the way as a, uh, a specialist in microbiology, Dr. Garza Valdez, um, and his colleague, Professor Mattingly, who is head of microbiology at the University of Texas, San Antonio. And what they have shown is that um, many surfaces, but particularly linen, um, grow a kind of accretion of microorganisms that form a, a clear plastic coating mm -hmm. on uh, the surface. And that if you don't remove that surface, then you'll be dating partly living material as well as um, the original material of whatever date it might be. And because carbon-14 is a ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14, um, if you do something, if you add n recent material, you could will conceivably throw off the ratio so that's that right. even though the shroud may be 2,000 years old, the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 would look like, mathematically, it would look like it's much younger. That's right. Okay. And, and that is what it does appear to have uh, been the case. And it has recently been... Uh, confirmed with a, a test that was done on an ibis mummy. Now, what is an ibis? An ibis is a bird. Um, we, ha we have them in Australia, and also they're in Egypt and uh, other parts of um, uh, the world. A uh, long-billed bird, but they were, were sacred mm -hmm. to the uh, Egyptians. And, and so they were also... They were mummified, and uh, so it was very easy, because uh, the, the logic here was that uh, one argument, so far as the difference in mummy linens from the body was that to perhaps the body had been rewrapped 1,000 years later. Well, in the case of ibis mummies, there's no way that anyone would have bothered right. to, to rewrap mm -hmm. um, one of the, the, these birds. Um, they, you know, thousands were mummified because they were sacred, but mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you wouldn't go to an individual right. one right. And, and rewrap it. Right. And so there was a very good case for saying this one could not have been uh, sort of rewrapped a thousand years later. And uh, then the coating was perceived on uh, this, this mummy. Uh, a guesstimate was made from the, deg the depth of coating of about um, how many centuries the dating would be skewed. And Garza Valdez, in fact, said, um, well, if the difference between the body and the, the, the wrappings comes out any more than 500 years, um, because he saw it was thinner than the shroud, um, I will consider you know, my argument vindicated. And indeed, the um, dating came out to around 600 years a difference. So, yeah. and, there, and there again, the, the actual bird was dated 600 years older than, than, its wrappings. than, the, than the wrappings. Yeah, and I say this has been the consistent pattern with every anomaly that you've had in this instance, is the wrappings always appear. What it appears to be is that um, linen has an amazing surface to it. <laughs> you know, if you take a piece of wood, then, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a, a flat... Uh, surface right. for the most part. But if you think of a, a linen and the way it's composed of threads, and those threads are in, um, composed of um, then millions and millions of individual fibers, each of those has a surface right. around it. And right. so the accretion that you can actually have from microorganisms that are actually living on this um, are, it, it is quite enormous. So you could, you could actually have a situation where you could have a tremendous amount of this organismic, uh, this, this secretion because it can wrap around outside of the threads, the microfibers. That's right. And uh, so there's a tremendous amount of surface area yeah. for it to attach to. I mean, the stupid thing is that I actually saw this in 1973 when I was able to see the shroud myself mm -hmm. without realizing what I was looking at. Um, uh, I was very fortunate in 73 that uh, I was uh, uh, invited to Turin and spent a period of about eight hours overall, uh, over three days, examining the shroud at close hand with no glass or anything like that. And the, the puzzle to me, I went expecting the cloth to be kind of falling apart and looking.